there. Uh, right where you are. Let's, let's just bow our heads. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, God of our mothers and of our fathers and our God, now send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us now so that the words which are spoken and the words which are heard may be the words of the truth of your gospel for the living of our days. In Jesus' name, we ask all this. And I heard the church say, amen, amen, and amen. So <clears throat> I'm asking you to pray around the message with me. Stand, though the battle is rough. I want you to raise your hand if you're going through a rough battle right now. If somewhere in your life you're going through a rough battle, battle right now. And I, 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 I want you to find a neighbor, shake their hand and tell that neighbor, stand in the midst, neighbor, stand in the midst, stand in the midst, stand in the midst of, of that battle, though it is rough. We come today to the final chapter of Ephesians. Chapter six, helps us wind down from this first sermon series of the new year, beginning with Ephesians. Chapter six helps us to lift our hearts again around some passages that we've heard and that many of us know very, very well, for we've heard them before in our faith walk and in our discipleship journeys. Uh, you will notice that verse 12 in the New Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible says this. And, and I dare you to, to think about familiar passages that you've heard in the Bible. It says, for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness. So put on the whole armor of God. And it's rendered here in the message this way. It says, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Somebody say, watch out. All of this reminds us of life in the here and now. It reminds us that this life isn't a bowl of cherries all the time, amen? And this life gets hard every now and then, and that this life isn't really meant to all be easy anyway. The lyrics of a Gary Allen song bear some powerful truths for he sings life ain't always beautiful, but the struggles make you stronger and the changes make you wise and happiness has its own way of taking its own sweet time. Now I want you to give God a a hand praise if you know that every now and then happiness takes its own sweet time. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> we, we, we're going along happy and then all of a sudden something, bam, something happens to snatch it away. Amen? Have you been there, beloved? And in the midst of all this, verse 11 of this passage from uh, the sixth chapter of Ephesians reminds us to stand up. Stand up, though the battle is rough, beloved. Stand up. Oh, thank you, Nancy E. Turner, the living writer and author and thinker who says this, that living is getting knocked down time and again, then standing up time and again and once more. It's easy to act honorable when things are coming along and all your pastures are green. Plenty difficult when the ground is dried and burned 
and people have connived to even take that from you, I'll sell this place or I'll lose it. I'll go on. People who don't have hard times aren't living. Thank you to uh, comedian Martin Lawrence. If you've ever been in a space where Martin Lawrence made you laugh till you cried and your belly hurt, amen? Know that there's also a spiritual side to the man as well. For he said this, I'm proud of the blessings that God has bestowed upon my life. He's given me the vision to truly see that you can fall down, but you can still get back up. Hopefully I'll learn from my mistakes and have the opportunity to strengthen and improve the next thing I do. Sometimes God is simply getting us ready for the next thing God wants for us to do. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, brilliant, brilliant master motivator and inspirer, Les Brown. Amen. For Les Brown said that thing that's very familiar to many of us. Oh, you've heard it before. When life knocks you down, try to land on your back. Why? Because if you can look up, you can get up. (laughs) And you got to let your reason get you back up. You can't just stay down because you can stay down. Amen. You got to stand up again, beloved. Get up. (laughs) There's an abundant amount of information out there. I would tell you uh, that lets us know that the amount of strength that it takes for each of us uh, individually to move from sitting to standing is a predictor many times of our mortality. You can take a test on the video that I posted with this sermon on the United Church of my fellow Facebook family page and You can take that test and kind of find out. I don't know if you really want to know, but you can kind of find out, you know, what is ahead for you a bit. Mm -hmm. Because what's ideal is if you can if you can come from your sitting motion to a standing one with no hands. But then if you can't do it with no hands, if you could do it with one hand, that's better. And if you 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 can't do it, if you if you get both your hands on your knees instead of on the sides of the chair, that's even that that, that, that's better. Amen. So that so that as you're going along in your life, you can you can kind of you can see physically what our challenges are to to go from sitting to standing. Amen. For to stand takes a certain amount of strength. To stand takes a certain amount of will. To stand takes a certain amount of ability. Does it not? Yes, it does. To stand, we must all also know what fuels us. Amen? And so I'm going to ask you to turn over to page seven in your bulletins that you might uh, uh, make some notes and follow your Grow, Pray, Study resource, your G. P.S. Amen. We'll get to the G.P.S. at the very end. Uh, But if you want to make some notes on this fuel piece, you're certainly welcome to. We must know what fuels us as Christians to stand, to stand, beloved. We must all, number one, invest in our own growth. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes it's not just money that we're investing in our own growth. Sometimes we've got to invest time in our own growth. It's not just about everybody else's needs in our lives. Sometimes we've got to invest in ourselves so we're our best selves to give to others. Amen. Even Jesus Christ, the perfect son of God, took time to recharge himself. That's what the Gospels tell us. They tell us that Jesus sometimes withdrew. He just went, he, he, he went away from where the disciples were. He went off into the mountains. And there it says that Jesus prayed. He prayed because for Jesus, he needed the fuel of prayer in order to continue to do the miracles and the ministry that God called him to, to, to be about, to do. Amen. He withdrew 
and he prayed. And one great preacher friend of mine recalled the folks who say they don't have time to withdraw. Their lives are too busy. They don't have time to pray, John. Their lives are too busy. That preacher friend reminded me of them, well, if that's what they say, they ain't got time to do it. Then it's just like them saying, Sister B, then I just want to be drained. And I want to be hopeless. I'm going to consign myself to a life of hopelessness and being drained because I'm never refueling. All of us have got to refuel, y'all. We got to get our energy back. We got to get our battery started sometime more than once a day. Amen. We got to invest first in our in ourselves. There are times when life will knock us down. And we recognize we need others around us that will stand when we're knocked down. Amen. So secondly, we've got to invest in and build and keep nurturing great relationships. Amen. We've got to do that. The, the folks that have dinner parties and, 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 and lunchtime gatherings and times out on the farm to see the new goats. Amen. Right, Reverend Ann? To see the baby goats. Amen. To share that with others that will refuel them like it refuels you. Amen. Some of us have gardens in their backyards. Right, Elder Curry? You know, amen. Places where we get refueled. But there's also that relationship dimension where we're not down. They stand up beside us. They stand up for us. They stand up with us. Amen. And we recognize that that the Apostle Paul was writing to the Ephesians from jail. Jailbird preacher that I am, the message says. Sending the letter, not knowing when the letter would land, not knowing when the letter would be read. But clearly, he could not have been disengaged with the Ephesians if he did not have a relationship with them. He loved them so that he could share with them in a significant way that would hit their hearts. Amen. That would change their ways. He loved them enough to to, to see to it that they had leadership in his absence as well. Friends standing for us make a difference, not just for us, but for them too. Amen. We need friends that will stand up for us. The story is told of Olympian Eric Musambini and his unforgettable performance at the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. You may not remember him, but the 22 year old from Equatorial Guinea. Amen. Learned to swim a few short months before the games. Somebody say a few months. And then under a special program that encourages developing countries to participate, Eric was able to enter the 100 meter men's freestyle, even though he'd only practiced in a 20 meter pool. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I, I hear the difference, Pastor. Yeah, the, the, the other two swimmers in his heat were disqualified for false starts, leaving Eric to swim alone. Somebody say all by himself. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. And he flailed wildly as he swam and, and, and virtually stopped before the finish line, unable to continue until the capacity crowd in the natatorium where they were holding the race until that capacity crowd went from sitting to standing for the young man. And as they stood for him, they cheered him on. They clapped for him and, and he got whatever little bit of energy he needed, amen, as they jumped to their feet and cheered him on. He finally reached the wall and clung to the wall, having won his heat. Why? Because he finished. Amen. Why? Because people stood up for he told a reporter, it was the people's cheering that kept me going. The people cheering, we know, were standing on their feet. Hallelujah. 
they were standing. We all need a relationship, a relationship, a set of relationships. We all need friends and buddies we can count on. Amen. Friends that won't judge us, but stand up for us. Amen. We all need to be in relationships where people will stand when we're knocked down. Amen. And then in the final analysis, there's the Christian's particular fuel. Somebody say particular fuel. Amen. That, that can only come from praying. Amen. Oh, we're almost to your GPS. We're almost there. But I must, I must, I must tell you the story before we get there of the little boy who prayed for ice cream. Somebody say ice cream. Somebody say my favorite ice cream is what flavor? Oh, caramel. That's good. Yes. Anybody else? Butter pecan. Yeah, that's good too. What else? Chocolate, of course. Uh, of course, vanilla and yeah, others. A amen. Amen. The mother took the little boy to the restaurant and he insisted when he got there. He said, Mama, I, I got to say my grace. And I want everybody to hear me as I say my grace because I'm I'm so grateful for this chance to be together. She said, well, go ahead, son. And this is the grace that he prayed. God is good. God is great. Lord, I thank you for the food. And I will thank you even more when mom gets me ice cream for dessert and liberty and justice for all. Amen. Now, thank you so much for your reaction because some customers there in the restaurant did what you did. They laughed, except for one. She was an older lady. She was not having a good day. Somebody say not a good day. She had something to say about the prayer, and this is what she said. She said, kids, these days, mm, mm, mm. asking God for ice cream. We should be ashamed. And as soon as she said it, the boy was in earshot of her and he heard it and he began to cry. But across the room, there came a man who was sitting at his table, trying his best to mind his own business, sitting at his table. And yet when the boy started crying, he got up from his table. He stood on his feet. He walked over to that little boy, put his arm around his shoulder and looked at him in the eye and said, son, I know God. I love God. And I want to tell you on God's behalf that God is all right with your prayer. Right. And, 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 and as he began to smile, uh, the, 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 the gentleman looked at him and he said, and, and I want you to know that a little ice cream, son is good for the soul. Uh, everybody say good for the soul. Now, not a half gallon of ice cream. A half gallon of ice cream is sin. Amen. Not a whole pint of ice cream. A whole pint of ice cream is too much. It's too much. Amen. But a, a little ice cream is good for the soul. Amen. Amen. And maybe maybe we just ought to pray for that, that, that lady who who said those nasty things about uh, about about not about you and, and, and maybe it's because she 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 doesn't she doesn't have any any ice cream so the boy began to began to eat his meal and as he finished his meal the chef came out the chef was pleased to bring the little boy a big bowl the biggest bowl they had of some ice cream for him and the spoon and he looked down at the spoon and the ice cream and all the scoops in there, and he began to lick his lips like this. Mm -hmm. But as he licked his lips like that, he looked down at the ice cream again, and he picked up the bowl. And he took it over to that lady's table that had criticized him. And he put it in front of the lady, and he said, Ma'am, I want you to have this ice cream today. You see, a little ice cream is good for the soul. And sure enough, the lady began to beam. She began to smile, and then all went well. Afterwards, he he said, "You know, my my, my soul is all right. I'm just concerned about about you." Oh and this morning, all because of a prayer, y'all. 
a grace that was said in the boldness of one who was standing in his spirit. Amen. He, he was standing as he was shouting the prayer so the whole restaurant could hear him. Amen. He was standing as he got up from his table with that very bowl of ice cream he said he wanted so well. Amen. And gave it to the lady who needed it more than him. <laughs> Amen. This morning, we know the power of prayer is, is abundant. We know it's rich. That's why as Christians, we can't, we, we can't skip it. We can't stop it. We can't, we can't just say, I'm not going to pray anymore and just wonder what God's going to do with me while I go along in my life. Don't be like that. Amen. Pray, pray more. Because this is the scripture that tells us to pray, to, to, to pray all that we we can. Amen. And, and as we uh, as we look at our as we as we look at our, our GPS, <clears throat> we we note that in the new revised standard version of the Holy Bible in Ephesians six in this passage that it says pray at all times. Somebody say, how you do that, preacher? Thank you for asking. Amen. The message, the message New Testament says it this way. Pray long and hard. Amen. So as we go along to mature in this life, we would do well to learn how to pray more, no matter how much we pray already. So one way to pray at all times, one way to pray long and hard. One way is to make quick, brief prayers your habitual response for number one to every situation you meet throughout the day. Quick, brief prayers. When we're tempted to cuss somebody, ah, come on, somebody. When we're tempted to, 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 to say how we really feel about what we heard happened on the radio or, or, or seen happen on the news. Amen. Instead of in, 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 instead of cursing, let us send out a quick, brief prayer throughout the day to make make it your habitual response. Somebody steps on your toe instead of saying, dag nabbit. Come on, somebody. I'm praying for you to walk straight, neighbor. <laughs> Amen. All right. Walk a little straighter the next time. My goodness, my toe is hurt. Amen. Quick, brief prayers. And then how do we do this? How do we pray at all times? Number two says another way is to order your life around God's desire so significantly and God's teachings so significantly so that your very life, your very life becomes a prayer. Very life is what you put in the blank. Your very life becomes a prayer. Oh, hallelujah. How wonderful it would be for Christians' lives to be a prayer. Amen? Then we can walk in what St. Francis of Assisi said in that great prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Don't we want to get to that sometime in our lives? I, I, you got to make your very life a prayer. And then thirdly, you don't have to blank, blank. You don't have to isolate yourself. You don't have to become a monk, a priest, a nun, a man, go off into the mountains or into the desert or into the freezing Arctic somewhere, a man, all by yourself to pray for the world all day, every day. You don't have to isolate yourself from other people and from daily work in order to pray constantly. You can make prayer your life and your life a prayer while living in a world that needs God's powerful influence. How many of you know that this world needs God's influence right now? I mean, right now. Amen. I mean, right, right now. Amen. Soon as you decide you're going to do something good. Somebody's going to remind you of all the bad that's going on. Amen. Pray for them and then pray for yourself and your own response and pray for what rises up in you. Amen. I just get despair 
rising up in me. Pray for that despair that rises up in you. Amen. Pray to be more curious about the world and all that's going on in it. For as you satisfy some of your curiosities, perhaps you'll even have your mind changed about things. Amen. I, I just want to close. I, I, I want you to know I, I, I got to fraternity meeting last night. Let the church say amen. Not always able to go, but I was glad to go last night and, and ran into my frat brother, who is the assistant superintendent of schools for the Denver Public Schools. Eddie Cohen is his name. Amen. We love Eddie. And Eddie's got that serious look about him, and it's become more serious since he took that big position with DPS, y'all. He looks like the weight of the world is on his shoulders. We had one of the older brothers say, I don't know how we get together as, as fraternity men, and, and I don't know how we do this without looking at the state of our country right now and making comments on the state of our country right now and how we might change things and what we respond to and what we do. And, and don't you know that opened the floodgate? Amen. And as the floodgate opened and cats started chiming in, it came to Brother Eddie. And Brother Eddie said, you know, I just came to fraternity meeting tonight because I just wanted to have a few hours of peace with my brothers. <laughs> I don't want to discuss the state of the world no more. We've been doing that all week. <laughs> We've been trying to figure things out. Oh, I just want some peace. Can I have some peace in the fraternity meeting? <laughs> I said, man, I felt that before. Amen. I'm with you. I got you, man. I got you. Amen. Sometimes, beloved, we've got to opt for praying instead of complaining. All right. Amen. <laughs> When we're tempted to complain, we pray. Why? Because this passage right here, this sixth chapter, verses 10 through 20, you go through it, it says, pray long and hard. Pray at all times. So I want you to try it during the week ahead. Amen? Test it out. Test God and see if God is not faithful in helping you to reach another height or to helping you see that everything doesn't have to be as serious as we try to make it. Amen. Some people say we live in a, a, uh, what, what, what does the meditation say? It says, you see, some people say we live in a minute rice society, but don't you know, every time you get that old rice pot out and you let that rice boil for 20 minutes or so, some say 30, some say a little longer, amen. Don't you know that that long grain rice sometimes is better than the minute rice? It just right. tastes better. Sometimes it's better just to take the time, amen? To take the time to get into God's presence, to take the time instead of talking in our prayers all the time, to take the time just to listen to what God is trying to say. To take the time just to get out into God's creation. Don't you know we had a break in winter and winter's going to come roaring back in this region? Amen. We ain't through. Winter ain't through with us. Amen. But if you missed 60 and 70 degrees last week, then you, you might miss it until springtime showed up. Amen. There were people around the world that were talking about Darren is over there in Paris. She said, I saw it was 80 degrees almost over there with y'all. Because <laughs> it's cold where she is, y'all. Oh. Amen. It's cold. Oh, Be grateful. Figure out a way to, to tap into that prayer fuel God encourages. And you'll reap the benefits. Benefits that are yet untold. This morning. As we prepare to go, as we prepare to move on from from this and into Lent, because we move into Lent and the preparation for Easter, as we prepare to do that very thing, pray, pray at all times, y'all, pray long and hard. 
let us bow our heads that we might be in prayer right now. Right now, holy God, I ask your grace for these, your people. I ask your grace for the ones, oh God, who came with a measure of hopelessness tugging at them because their situation feels hard that they're in right now. And oh God, for some in the congregation today, their situation not only feels hard, it is hard. And so God, for those who need you and know they need you and call out for you, we pray for them today that their prayers might be answered. For those, oh God, who, who don't know where to turn and don't know what to do, but find themselves in a hopeless place, Oh God, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to restore their hope. For those, oh God, who are in the middle and can't quite figure out what to do, they just they 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 just know that there's something to do, but they don't know what to do, oh God. I, I ask your grace today if they're in the middle ground, if they're in the place where they just need to be in front of you, where they need to be in meditation with you, where they need to be in silence with you where they need to be in relationship with others who are struggling with some of the same things they're struggling with. Oh God, this day, help us not to buy into all that would confound us, and consign us to chaos in our lives, but rather, oh God, help us truly, truly, truly be your servants that seek peace the peace of Jesus that passes all understanding. Let Jesus find us seeking his peace today, tomorrow, the day after that, and the day after that until he comes again. Help us to seek his peace every day we're on earth. All these things I pray in the precious, the marvelous, the majestic and outstanding name of the one who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, that we might have life here and life in eternity. Jesus, the Christ, our Lord. And we all said amen, amen, and amen.